Hello there. Shogun 1.10 introduces a range of improvements to existing features and functionality. As more features and enhanced levels of control are introduced to our packages, we are increasingly mindful of the user experience they are going to be part of. Our goal is to ensure that the power and flexibility that these improvements offer to our users are maximised through panels, parameters and options that are accessible and consistently encourage best practice. Shogun 1.10 represents the first steps in what will be a series of iterative improvements to our user interfaces, all of which are hugely informed by the feedback we receive from existing users. In this video, we're going to share the following updates. Visual enhancements to interactive components, our simplified camera calibration panel, improved docking framework, and our new review panel. Now let's start by taking a look at the updates we've made to existing components within the UI. On screen now is the previous user interface, as seen in Shogun Live 1.9. And here's the updated version in Shogun Live 1.10. From a global perspective, we've been more selective about where we use the Shogun branded colour and opted for monochrome across all standard elements. In doing so, we've implemented a broader application of contrast, which is intended to help address some issues with readability and accessibility that were apparent in earlier versions of our software. Similarly, our show advanced and set to default panel options have been replaced with icons, reducing the amount of duplicate text across all panels in the software. We've also made the reset to default option visible on a per item basis, improving the visibility of a piece of functionality that was previously only available with a right click. This move to a greater use of icons in general has also been applied to the main toolbar, where you will see our system and view settings have been updated accordingly. Highlights on hovered items are now more consistent to give the interface a more responsive feel. We've adjusted element sizing on things like sliders so that in instances where lots are visible at once, users can enjoy a less cluttered visual experience. Our system and tracking lists now use the same technical framework for better consistency, with filters removed and improvements made to category headings to enable quick selection of items within. Now, let's take a look at our new camera calibration panel. For a large portion of our users, the first part of the software they interact with on a daily basis is the camera calibration panel, used to set up their motion capture volume. As seen on screen now, in Shogun 1.9 this was an extremely large, busy panel irrespective of where you were in the process or which sections of the panel you needed to use. So the first thing we've done is simplify the options available and organise them into distinct sections with their own icons to better distinguish them from one another. As this panel can get quite complex, our goal with this has been to reduce the amount of time users spend needing to look for the specific area they wish to use. This has also allowed us to introduce localised advanced settings controls. This means that advanced settings for each section can now be shown without revealing all the other advanced sections at the same time, increasing the height of the panel as a result. This is something that was pointed out by numerous customers as sometimes being confusing, particularly when they were new to the software. The core functionality available with the advanced settings is also true of resetting to default, which can now be done on a per section basis. Moving on to our docking framework which controls the positioning and interactivity of panels across the application. Previously, to close individual panels required them to first be undocked, like so, demonstrated in Shogun 1.9. This is no longer the case, as each panel can now be closed irrespective of whether it's docked or the currently active panel. Entire sections of panels can now be minimised to the side of the screen which could only be achieved previously by minimising individual panels one by one. As touched upon when discussing the visual enhancements, we've adjusted the use of padding and contrast so these tabs are still clearly visible. We've likewise removed the ability to close the final panel, as many users reported having done this by accident and being confused as a result. Finally, 
we have separated captured takes from their previous location in the capture panel into a new review panel. Many long-time Shogun users fed back to us that throughout a long day's motion capture shoot, their list of takes can get quite large and difficult to navigate when it was part of the capture panel. Likewise, many have suggested a preference to arranging their panels in a way that reflects their overall workflow. So setup processes are contained on the left hand side of the screen with review options available on the right. Now one thing that is very important to remember is that a connection still exists between the review and capture panels. By default, most users will want to review takes from the same folder they are currently capturing data to, since they may wish to review a take shortly after capture. We have therefore made the current capture folder the default option on the review panel. However, if a user wishes to review takes from a different folder, you can unlink the review folder from the capture folder and browse to the one which contains the takes you wish to review. So this provides you with just a brief insight into some of the changes that have been made to the interface as part of the Shogun 1.10 update. We are extremely keen to hear the feedback from new and existing users alike as we continue to review and improve this aspect of our software. Thank you very much for your time and as always we look forward to your feedback.